And this is the hole. Now at one time this was all squared off down there, but uh, the erosion naturally starts to wash it in. You know, if you don't get something up there, it'll keep washing in. So uh, I'm going to get that root out of there, pull that tree stump out that's over there. And then uh, I'll square it all off again and get it back down to 15 deep and 15 wide. And then I'll get the uh, car carrier over here, get that truck body over here. Oof. Uh, secure the roof and uh, and then bury it so then I can just drive my tractor down park it in there uh, any lawn equipment anything else you know I'll just park it down in there and I'll take this fence that I'm standing at now and I'll run it around out there down at the first part not where the grass is so I'll run it to the first part and uh, take it from there so this will be fenced in so the boys will have all this to play in as well and I'll have this down here so I can park things down there in the winter time and even during the summer. Uh, I'm not one for outbuildings too much. Uh, not with such little property. Um, you know, I mean, what am I doing? I'm walking maybe 15, 1800 feet back and forth. Uh, I mean, if I had all that boxed in and fenced in, it maybe would be a little different. But right now, because it's not, I don't need a lot of outbuildings. Now, if I was to move where we had uh, 10, 15, 20 acres, which I'd like to see somewhere in there, 30 acres or better. Uh, but, you know, 10 acres, 15 acres, uh, anything like that. Then I would probably have a number of outbuildings and I would have tools in them all because I am not going to want to keep walking or uh, driving a, uh, um, an all, what do you call them, ATVs all over the place to carry tools. So I would probably build a bunch of little uh, 8x8 or 10x10 outbuildings just to keep tools and such in. Put solar panel up so I can have a little bit of battery backup and charger and, and leave it at that. So, And then later on this evening, once the wife gets home, uh, I'll let her watch the boys. And I'll push this pile of leaves through and over the edge and I'll be done with that so but there we're at boys and guys and gals and whatever so I think I got there's another birdhouse right there all right the wife likes the birds I like them too anything living actually you can't see it from here well maybe I can get to a point where you can uh, if you can see that tree down there that's lying down and I can't really tell because I can't see it through the viewfinder. Um, but I dug out like this, a trench, under that tree where I can actually drive under that with the tractor. Uh, and drive out the other side. Um, because for a while there, uh, I didn't want to take the tree out. I wanted to stay, leave it there. Uh, that's going to be part of my plan, leaving that tree where it is. Uh, but I couldn't get over or around it, so I went under it uh, at the time. Uh, and I left it that way because, again, it's, it's nice. Well, where I'm going with this is um, my property is a no-hun zone. <laughs> so uh, underneath where that dips down, where I can drive through underneath that tree down there, all right, is where um, I hang a feeder and I feed the, uh, the deer and the coyotes and the foxes and whatever else wants to be fed uh, because it's down, it's low, it's hidden it's out of the, the elements of the wind uh, it's somewhat covered because of all the growth above it so it's a good place for them to go down and, and get out of the elements and, uh, and munge so and like I say I'm just uh, I'm not a hunter I believe in life uh, I will hunt if I have to feed, um, you know, but as long as I don't have to, uh, and uh, I won't, and that's all there is to it. Um, and even if it comes to, and it's just me, guys, so I mean, you know, uh, you know, I've had kids, and naturally I'm protected of my kids, I'm still, still protected of them, even though they're in their 30s and 40s. <laughs> Yeah, and they don't live around here anymore, but still. Um, you know, when they're younger, I understand you have to 
protect your kids. And you know, if you live in out in the woods where there's a lot of wildlife, you can't trust it all, and they're not going to know. So you got to kind of pay attention and protect. Uh, but at my time and age and life, uh, you know, if something comes at me, I'm going to try spraying them before I try to shoot them. Uh, I just don't believe in taking a life only because he's trying to protect his life. Um, you know, it's not like I'm, I'm with another human that understands. You know, uh, when I'm in the woods, I'm in his turf, so I have to kind of learn and live by his rules. Uh, so if he's trying to protect something or she, it's not because, you know, uh, you know, if it's because I'm doing something or whatever, it's not a reason to kill him, in my opinion. You know, now again, it'd be different if he was going after or trying to attack a child. But, you know, once uh, you scare them away a few times with some spray or mace or, or things like that, they tend to shy away from humans after that because they're not going to trust them. So, yeah, that's just my way of looking at it. Yeah, and uh, I'm 65 years old, and I've, you know, haven't uh, had any problems yet. And I've lived in the woods, you know. Uh, even though I'm in Connecticut, and I've been in Connecticut 90% of my life, uh, I did live upstate New York for a number of years. Um, and uh, out in the farmlands, in the woods. All right. Uh, my family had a... Actually, they owned four farms, five farms, I don't remember, to be honest with you. Uh, and they were around Johnstown, Gloversville, uh, Fonda, uh, you know, upstate New York area. And when I'm talking back then, Gloversville, <laughs> I mean, the only thing in the factory, in the town then was a factory and uh, a drugstore. <laughs> yeah. So, 